and welcome back to the vlog. My name is Claire Carmichael and I'm a newly qualified general practice nurse. And today's vlog I'm actually really really excited about because this is talking about things that I learned as a healthcare assistant or a care assistant working in a care home that I've brought into my nursing life. Things that I've learned that's made me grow as a nurse if that makes sense. Like the, those skills, those initial skills and I'm really really excited because I always rave about this because a care home is where I started my nursing journey back in 2005. So yeah, I'm excited. So just a very brief, quick overview. So I didn't know I wanted to get into nursing. I left school. I didn't know what I wanted to do with life. I got rubbish GCSEs and just, yeah, I went into hospitality and that was that. I just followed my mum's footsteps and that's it. Um, and then I had a bit of a dilemma one day and I, I was, I felt like I was at a crossroads and I didn't know where I wanted to turn in life, what I wanted to do with my career, but I wasn't satisfied in what I was doing. So I had a conversation with my lovely, lovely friend, Ian, who said to me, Claire, I can see you as a nurse. And I was like, what? Yeah, I never thought of myself as a nurse. I never thought of myself even as a care assistant because I always regarded those people as amazing, wonderful people and this high profession. And I just wasn't that person. I, I, like I leveled myself down here and they were up here. So yeah, I never thought of that as a career. But when he said it, I thought, actually, maybe there's something in this because I'm quite a caring person. I always looked after animals and stuff, birds, pigeons with broken wings and things when I was younger. I have got that really deep care inside. And I thought, you know what, let me just look into this. So I had a little look around about how to get into nursing, how to become a nurse and all of this. And something that came up was to start off as a care assistant. I mean, this was back in 2005. Now you can just jump straight into nursing pretty much. But yes, so I looked around and I found an amazing role as a care assistant in my very first care home. So completely left hospitality and oh, I loved it. Like, I'm not going to lie, I cannot for the life of me remember my very first day as a care assistant, but I never remember regretting it. I just remember just falling in love with it and every day I really enjoyed getting up and going to work but yeah I, it was just amazing and it was where I built all of the foundations of my career. So the first thing I want to talk about is the six C's of nursing. This is where I built and started that foundation. As a care assistant you will do all of these and more and these are absolutely 100% necessary to be a nurse I think and that's why they're there that's why the, that's why it's promoted and that's why the six C's came about because it's something they knew that nursing needed if that makes sense so let's go through the six C's and how I learned these as a care assistant so the first one is care. How can you not have the six C's nursing and care assistant without the word care in it? This comes in two parts, I think. So for me personally, the care that I learnt or not learnt, but built upon because I was already a caring person anyway. And there is two parts. So that first part is being caring. So it it's about your emotions and your empathy and um, respecting other people's dignity and wishes and just being that caring person like caring for someone else's emotional and physical well-being not just your own so it's having that ability to want to help other people that to me was the first thing that I discovered I really really wanted to help others and I wanted to be that point of call for their care and the second side to this is care as in those care skills in a way so things like personal care so washing helping with washing and dressing if someone can't eat on their own so helping them with that finding ways to adjust things to help them live this amazing quality of life because we want people especially in care homes they are very elderly they're very frail they're coming to the, the later stages of life so you want to make the quality of that life as an amazing experience as possible because those are their, possibly sometimes their last moments on this earth. So the care that you give and the care that they receive and those care type of skills are really, really important, I think, especially in care homes. So other things like assisting with toileting needs. So some people might need help um, on the toilet when they're on the toilet. Maybe they physically are completely bed bound. I hate this word, but I can't think of another word to describe it. But 
they are completely bed bound and they use maybe a commode um, or sometimes they use a bedpan. Sometimes they might have this, these incontinence pads as well. So it's that type of care that you're giving to your patients as well. Catheter care as well. So if they've got catheters, making sure you're recording the fluid balance and emptying and changing catheters. That's a skill that I learned very early on as a care assistant as well. That's not just for a nurse to do. Care assistants do that as well. So that was a really, really important one that I took away with me as well because I could take that onto the wards because I'd already done it as a care assistant so that was quite good that I could actually do those things so like I said care is a really really important one it, uh, to me it's one of the most important that's why I've put it one at the top but this is no particular order next up is communication this one is equally as as important as care because I find communication is one of those things that if it fails, doesn't matter where you're working, who you are, what you're doing, if that little piece of communication fails, it all crumbles. It can really, really make or break some people. It can make or break a shift. It can just, yeah, and the wrong type of communication could lead to the wrong person getting the wrong type of care as well. So they, they go hand in hand, care and communication, because communication is important. And it's not just thinking about, oh, speaking, listening. You have to think about the whole system. You have to think about the way that you liaise with your doctors, with your nurses, with your care assistants, um, with your residents, with your management, with pharmacies, with deliveries, whatever. But it's not just about the way that you talk to your patient. Communication is a whole massive thing. It's how you're documenting. It's those non-verbal communication. They say, I think it's 70% of our our communication is body language so it's thinking about your body language as well and maybe for those that have especially elderly people a lot of people have hearing aids they they might have um dentures they might have they might have had a stroke so the speech is impaired and they can't communicate as well they might have dementia so it's thinking about how to communicate with those sorts of people especially in the later stages of dementia where the understanding isn't quite as as it used to be making sure everything's documented clearly concisely legible so other people can read it other people can understand the care that you're giving and just ex just putting that out there so that no mistakes are made compassion so you have to have compassion if you're working as a care assistant because you have to have that level of like empathy you have to sort of put yourself in their shoes and this is what i did a lot actually as a care assistant i found myself having a lot of compassion actually so i find myself going above and beyond for my patients because i think do you know what this can't be nice for them to be in this nursing home their fa friends and family aren't here it must be quite a scary horrible time so i would always think oh i need to do this i need to do this i need to do that i need to do this and so i would just put myself out there for the person it is about showing that compassion your level of understanding of their needs of that patient as well this role isn't about you and your feelings. It is about very much about the other person. And you have to understand that and take the time to understand each patient as well. Get Talk to them, get their background, get their history, find out what they love and what they enjoy doing activities wise. And just, yeah, just have that level of compassion for your patients and respect them in a way and just again is talking about that quality of life as well so it's making sure you give them that good quality of life in potentially their last moments as well commitment so this is an interesting one because you do have to be a very committed dedicated person to do this role this is something that if you're off sick all the time if you're late all the time it really really affects the team so you have to really love the job you have to really be committed to the job and for me this isn't a job this is my life it is my career the people you work with become your family you spend most of your time at work all day every day five days a week three days a week however many days a week so you have to be committed to that role and you have to be happy in it as well it's not just about commitment it's about being happy in what you're doing and finding that um, contentment as well in a way so yeah you have to be committed you have to be committed to yourself to your job to your colleagues to your patients to your management and just show that this is the job for you and show that you're actually a dedicated team member 
and just being that person will just make it run so much smoother and the, it, the patients will not suffer as a result for it because that's what it's all about at the end of the day it's about the residents that live there and being committed to them and making sure that they have everything they need and you have to be that person for them and working in a care home will absolutely give you that because the more you do the role, the more you'll feel confident in things and the, the more you will think, do you know what? I love this job. I love it. I'm going to get up earlier. I'm going to arrive earlier. I'm going to see my patients. And you will fall into that commitment routine as you go along because it is an amazing career and it's really hard not to be committed to that sort of role. And then we have competence. So this is quite a good one, actually, because a lot of mistakes are made when we we aren't comfortable, we aren't confident to do something or we're not trained properly to do something and we do it anyway because we think, oh, it'll be OK. What's the worst that can happen? This isn't a Dr Pepper commercial. Other brands are available, but, you know, it's the most relevant with that one. Um, anyway, you have to be competent at what you do. And I learned that skill very, very quickly as a care assistant. And you will be put through amazing training packages to teach you all of the skills you need. So things like the catheter care, you have man your manual handling and um, you have personal care and hygiene training you have different communication some care assistants as well will give medication so you'll have training to do that and make sure you're competent to do that and it's something again it's something I built on and learned as a care assistant I was a care assistant for almost six years so I really did build the competencies to do things and if you're in doubt uh, you should always ask anyway and you should always get help and seek further training as well which they are more than happy to do because they would rather you be safe than sorry but yes as a care assistant I built up those skills and I became a competent individual so that when I started my nursing I was really really confident and competent in doing things actually so much so that in my first year people often thought I was a third year student because I could do things autonomously because I knew because I'd done it previously in previous jobs I did all the personal hygiene um, I did medications on the medication round. So these little things, I already had those skills as a built as a care assistant to take into my nursing. And it just made me shine more, I think, in a way. But this isn't to make you panic. If you're going into nursing and you haven't had that experience, it's OK, because you do learn that as a nurse as well. But I'm just going through the things that I learned that really did help me as a nurse. And then we have courage. So courage is an interesting one to throw in there because you do need courage for this job. Some of you may have seen some awful news stories, panorama documentaries on television about the abuse that can happen out there. So this is really important with the courage because you need to speak up if you see anything like that or if you see a safeguarding concern, for example, you need to be able to recognise that. So having the competence, taking the competence and putting it into courage. So being competent to see and recognise safeguarding, you'll get the training for that. And then raising your voice and raising the concerns to your management teams and safeguarding leads as well to protect your patients. So you really do have to have courage. And that is something I learned 100% as a care assistant as well. So for me, this was a no-brainer. It was easy for me to have courage because at the back of my mind, I had the compassion, I had the care. I wanted to protect my patients. I also had the competence because I could recognise signs of abuse and neglect and safeguarding. So I built on that. So it was a no-brainer for me. It, when I saw my patients suffering, I spoke up because that's my job at the end of the day. I'm not there to make friends with carers although that's nice I mean we are all friends and we get along and there's teamwork and everything however if someone even if it was a friend of mine or family member of mine if they were neglecting a patient or abusing a patient I would absolutely speak up and I have spoke up before I've spoke up a number of times actually where I've seen um, a care assistant be not so nice to a patient and I've had to speak up and report that abuse also safeguarding as well so a patient's family member for example was financially abusing her and I need to speak up and report my concerns on that and luckily other people had noticed that as well so we had this little case study going but not only that you have to have the courage inside yourself that if you're worried or you're scared about doing something to face those fears and just go for it if you've had the training and if you know what you're doing basically so if you've got the again bringing that competency in 
if you're competent to do something but you you fear it in a way so I know some people that are nurses that are scared of blood but they've pushed themselves through it they've got their venipuncture training and now they take bloods and they're okay with it so it's about being safe so making sure you are confident comfortable first first things first but having that courage to push through your fears so if you are scared of death for example and you're really worried about doing the last offices with a patient after they've passed away push through it and give it a go because I know it's not nice and it is a really tough thing to do and it really does affect you emotionally sometimes but try and look at it at different angles don't just think oh my god this is scary this is a dead body think about you know what this is the last piece of care I'm going to ever give this patient. This patient is going to receive their last piece of care and love and from me. And what an honour that is. What an honour to do that for somebody as the last thing that you can do when they're on this earth. I think it's just a really powerful, actually, and really privileged to do that for someone. So if you are scared of doing that, please just think a little bit differently about it and do it and then but make sure you have a debrief afterwards so speak to your colleagues about it speak to your family or friends about it and how you're feeling about the situation and reflect on it because it can be quite emotional and it can be a little bit oh especially your first one so yes just take your time it's okay and I am that person I I do fear some things and um, I think death was one of the things that I feared and I, I will never forget the first time I had to do that to a patient but I am that person that will push myself as well so all these courage things I learned as a care assistant so facing death for example I'm terrified of death but I faced it and I grew and I built and I gained more confidence so I wasn't so scared about it anymore and when the when the time came where a resident had died and someone said have you ever done last offices I was like I've got no idea what you're on about what is last offices and they said come on we'll show you and talk you through it and actually I'm so glad that I did that because it was just nice it was a nice experience as much as it's horrible it was just nice that I pushed myself and did that because then again, when I went into nursing and I had to do it in my nursing career, it really, really helped for when I was at that moment. So if you can do it, do it, but also just take your time and go at your own pace. So not only the six C's did I grow as a care assistant onto my nursing, but actually had a lot of resilience as well. Care work it is tough and you will get really really tough days where you just think oh my gosh but you do bounce back and you reflect and you grow as a person and I think my resilience levels are like up here somewhere now just about but yeah you will definitely especially reflections you need as a nurse as well so you will always reflect sort of unconsciously so you'll think about the previous day what went right what went wrong how could I have done that better and you naturally do that and this is what is needed as a nurse so as part of nursing you have to write reflections so you write a, a list of maybe a situation where it's positive whether it's bad it's up to you but what went well what can you do better next time how can you keep this going if it was a good thing that happened if it was a negative thing that happened then how you're going to process that how you can change that for the next time so that it doesn't happen again if that makes sense so definitely reflection is something I, i've done ever since my first day as a care assistant and built that resilience those two things just yeah hand in hand so other things that i learned as a care assistant that i've talked into my nursing today is definitely how to speak to people and i know that sounds weird but i am that awkward person in social situations I wasn't very confident and I learned how to fill the time I could do on my vlogs every day but um yes I learned how to make that small talk make those conversations how to sit down and speak to someone and it not being weird or anything and also recognizing cues so you will get confident in knowing what you can and can't say to patients so some patients you can have a laugh with and you can say all sorts and they'll be happy with that and other patients or residents you can't and you have to be really like straightforward professional they want someone that's assertive knows what they're doing and that's a skill in itself so that is something that I've definitely picked up as a care assistant and that those years of experience that I took into my nursing with me something else that I learned is patience I know like patience as in I'm a very patient person rather than your patience <laughs> it's so weird because 
as a, a person in my own home, I'm very impatient. If I'm waiting for a parcel or a delivery, oh my God, <laughs> oh, I'm so impatient. I just want to get it now. Oh, but it's amazing how different I am in that environment. I am so patient. And you will learn this as a care assistant. You will learn that everything takes time. It's not a rush. And even when you're having a busy day and you need to rush a little bit, you will learn patience and you will learn that the people that you're caring for have to take it slow and have to take it step by step. And they need really good explanations and things like that. And sometimes people, whether it's your colleagues, management, residents, some people might try your patience a little bit and you'll just be like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so yes, patience is definitely something that I've built and grown upon and it actually shocked me. So all in all, literally as a care assistant, it was my love. My first love is where I fell in love with nursing. It's where I built all of my foundations of being a nurse. It's where I grew, it's where I developed, it's where I gained resilience. It's just everything. It, it really, really, and I say this from my whole heart and soul, it really did give me just everything that I am today. And I'm so grateful for that. And I just love it. So if you are thinking about going into care work, you're not nursing yet, but you're thinking about going into care work first, absolutely 100% do it because it's the most rewarding, amazing experience and you will love every every single minute of it. And if you do go into care work, you just might find out a few things about yourself that you did not realise, just like I did. Good luck. Music